Good day everyone. Myself Kara Jayashree Jayaprakash from St Joseph's College Autonomous Irinalkura. Today I'll be taking the seminar on the topic prismatic compass, setting map, map to ground and ground to map. Prismatic compass. The prismatic compass is an accurate and reliable instrument of a great value except during a magnetic storm or when subject to strong local magnetic fields, for example in the polar regions. Magnetic compass has been and is still being used extensively in ships, aircrafts and the various parts of the army to find and maintain direction. With the help of a prismatic compass, one can measure magnetic bearing on the ground. There are two types of prismatic compass, the dry type and the liquid type. Among these two types, the liquid type is the easiest to use even though it is less sensitive. These are the parts of a prismatic compass. You can see the clamping screw, milled vane, setting value, prism and notch. How to take a bearing? Open the lid of the compass and turn the prism so that it lies flat on face and is covering over the compass. You will see that the needle of the compass is suspended freely. It always points towards the north. Therefore, all the angles measured with the prismatic compass are with respect to north. Compass error. A compass error occurs sometimes due to the presence of impurities in the material by which a compass is made of or other reasons because of which the magnetic needle may not point towards the magnetic north, but a little to the east or west of it. Examples The compass error is said to be 2 degrees east if the compass needle points to 2 degrees east of the magnetic north. The compass error is 5 degrees west if the compass needle points to 5 degrees west of magnetic north. How to take a bearing Open the lid of the compass and turn the prism so that it lies flat on the face and is covering over the compass. You will see that the needle of the compass is suspended freely. It always points towards the north. Therefore, all the angles measured with the prismatic compass are with respect to north. Now, bring the prism up to the eye. You will see two things. First, above the prism, through the slot on the case, you will see that hairline on the window. Second, you will also see a set of figures through the prism. You should also note that the compass must be held in a way that the hairline is vertical so that it cuts the object on which the bearing is being taken. Setting a map. A map is a representation of selected natural and man-made features of the whole or part of Earth's surface on a flat sheet of paper on a definite scale with their correct relative geographical positions and elevations. A map is said to be set or oriented as such when it is placed on the ground, it corresponds directly to the ground, that is, the true north of the map points to the north on the ground. It is easier to read a map when the objects on it are pointing in the same direction as the objects on the ground. Methods of setting There are two methods for setting a map by compass and by objects on the ground. Setting by compass. Draw a line on the map showing the magnetic north from a point on a grid. Open the compass and lay it flat on the map over the line so that the hairline lies along the magnetic north line. Turn the map until the compass needle comes parallel to the hairline. Since the magnetic north on the map and the magnetic north in the compass is now pointing to north indicated by the compass needle, the map is now set. Setting by objects on the ground. First, without a compass when own position is known. Use a straight edge object such as a railway line. Recognize one object on the ground and on the map and join your own position to that object. Hold the map in a way that when looking along the line, you see the objects on the ground in the same straight line. Second, without a compass, when own position is not known. Parallel method. Select two landmarks which are easily recognizable on the map. 
If continuous landmarks are not visible, then choose two objects and imagine a line joining them. With each landmark, make the corresponding landmark on the map parallel and the map will be roughly set. On near line joining two points, identify two nearby objects on the map and on the ground. Stand on an imaginary line joining them and set the map. Finding North without compass. The position of North can be discovered by one of these following methods. First, watch method. Point the hour end of your watch towards the sun. You will see that the line bisecting the angle between the hour end and the direction of the 12 o'clock will be pointing to south. It must be ensured that the angle bisecting must always be that which is less than 180 degrees. This is a rough method and applies only in the northern hemisphere. Second, equal altitude method. Take a fairly large piece of paper or cardboard and spread it flat on the ground. In the center, fix a pencil or piece of wood perpendicular to the ground. It can be done with the help of a coin, fix it at the base of the pencil or wood with sealing wax or by directly pushing it in the ground. The pencil will show a shadow on the paper as shown by the dotted line in AB of figure 8. Make a mark where the shadow ends and name it as mark B. And then from the base of the pencil, draw a circle of radius AB. Wait till after midday until the sun has moved around sufficiently for another shadow to appear. When this happens, draw a line bisecting the angle formed by the two shadow lines. This will point to true north. This is an extremely accurate way of finding north, but it is of no use on cloudy or dull days. It is also a very time-consuming process as the work should Start earlier than midday. Third, by stars. In the northern hemisphere, the pole star indicates the position of true north to within 2 degrees. It is a bright star and it can be found by protruding a line from Great Bear. The pole star will be found slightly off this line on the side remote from the remaining stars of the Great Bear as shown in the figure. Map to Ground Finding out the details of a map on the ground is known as map to ground. Following methods are used to identify objects from map to ground. First, bearing and distance method. With the help of bearing and distance, we will be able to find out the own position. Find out the distance of the object to be identified on the ground with the help of a scale on the map. Using a service protractor, find out the bearing of the object and convert it into magnetic bearing. Estimate the distance on ground the object will be identified. Second, direction and distance method. Draw a line on the map between own position and the object identified. Calculate its distance and using any of the following method to find the direction of the object. With the help of a side rule, find the ground direction of the object. With the help of two points on the map, estimate the ground direction. Place a foot roller or pencil at own position and align it with the line of the map. Place a pin at each own position and at the object on the map, align both pins and find general direction. By estimation method, in this method, measuring, bearing, distance and direction of the object is identified with the help of other details in the proximity of the object. Ground to map. Finding out an object indicated on the ground in the map is called ground to map. Methods used to identify objects from ground to map are discussed below. Simple method. Using bearing. Find out the distance and magnetic bearing of the object. Translate magnetic bearing to grid bearing. Set the map and find out the own position. From the own position, draw a line at the given grid. Measure distance with the service protractor and mark the given distance on the line. The object will be in the proximity of the given mark. Intersection method. To find out the objects which are at a larger distance or in hilly terrain, an intersection method is used. In this method, with the help of minimum two prominent objects are taken which can be easily identified on the ground. Lines are drawn from the prominent objects to the objects to be identified on the map. This method is used when we cannot estimate the exact distance. Intersection is done by compass bearing. Take the bearing of objects from two non-prominent objects. 
draw the line on the map, the object will be in the proximity of the intersection of the two lines. Magnetic bearing is found by two methods. First, by compass. Take the forward bearing from a known object. And second, by back bearing. In war, in case we intercept the enemy's transmission, with the help of the fall of the shot, we can find out the location by working out the back bearing. Third, by direction method. In this method, set the map and mark own position. With the help of any following methods, find the direction of the object on the map. Draw a line from the own position in the direction. Put a mark on the line at the estimated distance of the object. The object will be in the proximity of the marked point. A. Place a foot ruler or pencil at own position and align it in the direction of the object. B. Place a pin at own position on the map. Place a second pin in the direction of the object. C. With the help of details around the object, find direction and mark the object on the map. D. With the help of sight rules, find the exact direction of the object. 4. By estimation method. By knowing the bearing and distance of the object on ground, it can be identified on the map by estimation. Thank you.